Hello, beautiful people. I'm asked all the time, especially on Zoom in my private patron community, new people show up and they're like, what do you do? How do you use it now? It's been this long, do you still use it? Are you still microdosing? How do you know when to use it? So I just wanted to tell you personally about me, how I use it today. If you don't know my story, why I use this and getting off benzodiazepines and all of that, my story is here on YouTube and here on my website, amityadreamer.net. And as I'm talking about this, I'm going to throw a lot of stuff around. If you have any questions about it, all of that is going to be on amityadreamer.net. It's all free and YouTube heavily censors this content. So most of the things that you're going to want to know about aren't going to be on YouTube. They're going to be on amityadreamer.net. If you want to support this work, buy me a coffee. The link is in the description to this video. So it's been three and a half, almost four years. And that was a heroic dose a very large dose. And after that, I started microdosing and I developed the protocol that I wound up staying on and using over and over again that I now talk about in a video. So the way that I use it now and some of the things that I've found was that when I did my first protocol, the first whole microdosing thing, I was off of it for about six weeks when I started having anxiety again. So I would get back on it again. During that time, I'm doing a lot of experimentation for this channel and for the knowledge base out there. So here and there, I'm also doing large doses of it. And I'm experimenting with ibotenic acid and I'm experimenting with smoking and all that stuff. It's micro dosing, macro dosing, heroic dosing. <clears throat> and then I would, I've found that as the years go by, as each subsequent year goes by, there's more and more time between my micro dosing protocol so I think like long-term healing is happening, but this is the year, it's 2022. So this is the year that I'm traveling and doing, holding ceremony. So those are super high doses. And I was holding ceremony about once a month and I'm sort of in a break right now. And I'm, I'm about to go to Switzerland, all of Europe to film the documentary that I'm making about that. And I have one left. I'm thinking about holding one for winter solstice myself, somewhere here, near here. I don't know about that yet. So, there's that. I've also done several large doses of psilocybin in there, so I can't discount the role that that would have played in my healing or getting me to this point. I've learned so much about Amanita now in these four years that it does not surprise me to think that permanent healing is happening to my receptors, to the neurotransmitters in my brain, to the way that my brain is optimizing and using those neurotransmitters as well as metals and electrolytes and minerals and uh, that there was a lot of involvement in gut bacteria that this mushroom alters or changes and supports in the immune system which can also drain the body affect the teeth which then can affect the gut which then affect the neurotransmitters in the brain it's all feedback loop and i believe that this has had a hand in healing all of it and that's not to say that I can't get in some really bad places. Like when I first started traveling this year in March, it was very overwhelming. I live here, I stay here, I make videos here. I didn't see people talk to people. The first year of my channel, it was just me making videos. The second year of my channel, I was doing speaking engagements by Zoom and then would get off of the computer and, and just not venture out much, travel or go anywhere or do anything. So when I had to first start traveling internationally and around the United States and dealing with customs and the insanity that is travel in 2022 was very overwhelming. So I wound up getting a tincture because it's the only thing I felt safe traveling with. Plus, I mean, I wasn't always in a place where I could make the tea and I didn't want to travel with my pipe. So the tincture was the only thing that I could really use. And I didn't really get on a protocol per se. I just used it as needed. And then whenever I would get home and get settled, I would do a macro or a, a higher dose or smoke it. But also when I was traveling and holding ceremony, so I'm doing super high doses smoking it and that was enough to sort of reset me. I would come home, rest, whatever. So what I think that this mushroom does, once you get that mushroom voice inside of you and I had that mushroom voice, I believe it was the mushroom voice that was calling out to me before I had ever seen the mushroom, heard of the mushroom, used or touched it, that called out to me to go to the woods that day that saved my life, that caused me to find it. And that's another whole story and, and I'm working on a video about that. It's just really hard to make, it's overwhelming. 
I tear up just talking about it. And I think that once you take the mushroom and, and you've got that mushroom voice on board guiding, and then there's, that's another whole discussion about the sentience of the fungi kingdom that you really can listen to it and know when to stop, when you're taking too much, when to back off. I have a video on finding your dose, but also like there's that mushroom voice that can tell you, hey, you know, you should probably think about doing a large dose soon. And then if you listen and you do that, and then right after that, something difficult happens and you weather it really well, it's like, hmm, okay, that was interesting. And then you can plan for life events. Like if there's some big family reunion thing you've got to go to, you can start dosing in advance of it. So there, there's conscious thought put into it, life situation, or like most people are giving me the same feedback and that's that they just feel it. They know when to take it and when not to take it. It's no question in my mind, I'm fine. I don't even think about taking it, I'm good. And then one day I'll wake up and it's like a craving, like a hunger. I miss it, I need it, I want it. So I'll make the tea. I'll put however much in it, in my, the tea in my tea and take it. I always listen to the mushroom voice and it's just random, but by the nature of this year and what this year is holding ceremony, it's just a year of large doses every single month interspersed with microdosing. And recently, about a week ago, I went through an experience with a narcissistic encounter that sent me all the way back before I ever even had heard of this mushroom. And it was scary how quickly, not just my whole body flipped over to a different user, different energy, my thoughts, my brain, my chemicals, everything. It's like I just went back in time. And it was really scary and I was shut down for three days. All my thoughts were these old thoughts that I don't feel today, but they were very present. Like they were the only thoughts I had. I just had the wherewithal and the presence of mind and the perspective now to know that none of that was real. I had the real physical sensations of feeling that way in the past and how terrifying it was and how confusing it was. It was awful. I didn't sleep, nightmares, the whole thing, anxiety. So I started back on the, on the microdosing protocol and I took the, a very large dose. Then I started the protocol the next day. So I took it three days in a row and now I have to wait three days. This is day two. I'll be taking it tomorrow and I already feel 100% better. I'm kind of feeling like I wanna smoke a little bit tonight. It's been about a month since I did a ceremony and I'm heading out to go do ceremony in three more weeks to hold a ceremony in Switzerland. So yeah, I may smoke some this weekend. So that's what I do now. It's mostly by listening to the, the mushroom voice, to your body and planning in your life, but also the healing that takes place long-term. And there's a lot that goes into that and, and a lot of videos that can be made about that and a lot that have already been made. But one of the things that I need you to know to help me pay the bills for this channel is that I have this private community where you can ask me questions. So I had to get off Patreon because of the censorship there. So I made my own personal site at Mushroom Voice. Isn't that a cool name? And then I make stuff with this topically and for the inhalation business and some other facial products and stuff like that. I sell those things to pay the bills to help me travel to film the documentary, which is going to reach thousands and thousands of people that need this. So if you can support in any of those ways, and if you don't wanna become that or patron or you don't wanna buy anything, then you can just buy me a coffee. There's a link in the description here and I really could use it. I love you beautiful people. I hope you are well. Bye.